Hey, my crafty friends. Welcome back to the channel. This is Miss Seashell. Today I'm coming on to share with you. I want to do a process of painting this beautiful resin aisle that my friend Jay sent me. She's uh, TJ Bird's Journey here on the YT. And I'm using several products that I think will help to sort of capture what I want um, as an end result of this aisle. Since it has the steampunk look, it's got the gears, it's got the clock, and I just want it to have an old rustic metallic look. So what I'm going to use is going to be the Heidi Swap Faux Rust Kit and you get it in this uh, coffee color, this cream, and then this nice, uh, rich, uh, soft cocoa color. Then you also get a little gold stamp ink pad. And that's to bring out the highlights. I'm going to use this brush or this palette knife. And then in the kit, you get this sponge applicator and then this brush. So I'm going to set this to the side here. And then also I'm going to be using some Surface FX Metal Metallicious uh, Christy Feinstein uh, Mica Powder. And it comes in depth, which is a nice uh, gunpowder color flash a golden color strength which is a nice copper color and glamour which is this uh, white silverish color and then this one is called uh, I can't remember what this one was called but it's a um, a gold Flick color. I think this one's called. Oh, it's called Shimmer. Yep. I can hardly see the name written on this one. So I'll be using these um, probably when I do the top coat. I'll add some of the uh, mica powder in there just to give it some pop. So let me get my tools started. I'll uh, get everything here. I got some um, paper towels. I'm working on my uh, craft mat here. So let me um, move this out the way and we'll get started. Okay, I um, decided I want to go ahead and use the darker paint first. So, I poured it in these little containers that I got from Dollar Tree um, over in the food section. And they come with these little lids. So, if you have any excess paint, you know, you can keep these uh, from drying out. And then I did the same thing with the lighter color, which we'll use this as the second coat. So, I'll go ahead and cover that up. So now I'm going to take the sponge brush and we'll go ahead and start working on our owl. And I'm going to cover every crevice as much as possible. I should have had some gloves on, but uh, I can't find my plastic disposable gloves at this time. So we're just going to get our hands dirty. 
I love this rich cocoa color. And it seems to be adhering to this resin piece pretty nicely. Of course, I have to work it into those little pieces here, or the little portions. And if I don't get, get it all completely covered, that's okay. Because whatever color, uh, well not whatever color, but the next color will go in and fill those up. So now I'm just going to brush some of this off. Hope everyone is doing well. I have been crafting all weekend, uh, doing several projects uh, for some happy mail. I got some new dyes in, and I've been playing around with those. So I had a pretty good crafty weekend. Um, it did rain a lot yesterday. So that made it even better to stay indoors and craft. Okay. So I got this covered as much as I think I'm going to use. So I don't want to take too much off. But so far even in this state I like the brown I like how it's got that distressed look and that's what I'm going for okay so now I'm going to speed up this process and I'm going to let you know, get my uh, heat gun and try to dry this as fast as possible. Okay, so I have gone and used my heat gun and I have dried this um, piece. And so far, isn't it a gorgeous the detail in that? So now we're going to go in with the lighter color and this is going to give it the highlight it's going to give it the the help bring it um, the rust effect so now I'm just going to take this little stipple brush here I'm going to lightly hit those top areas. And I don't want to cover the whole entire piece here. I just want to hit those those top areas like this. So I'm just taking the brush and actually just floating over the raised images. See that? See how it just helps to bring that out? Okay. And you don't need much. And I've never used this product before. I actually picked this up. I don't know. I think uh, sometime last year. From Tuesday morning. And 
I just didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I knew that I had to have it in my craft stash. So, I'm going to sort of dab some of these areas here. And I think I'm just going to leave like that. So now, I want to go back in again with my heat tool and dry that. Okay, I've dried that, so here's a closer look. And I like that. I like the detail on it. And you can almost see how it is starting to get that rust look. So here is where I think now, before I use the little ink, or this little gold ink pad just to hit those highlighted areas, I think I want to use some of my mica powder here. And I'm going to use the shimmer and the flash. And I'm just going to take my finger and you see that one? This is flash. This is such a real pretty color. I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to hit that See how that brings that, gives it that shimmer. That that really, I like that. I could have did this with a, a brush, which, you know what, let me see. Let me grab a little brush here. Let's see. And I think with the uh, mica powder here, I'm going to be able to go in and use. some of the other colors and sort of bring that out and right now I'm just kinda going with it you know uh, just letting the the bird talk to me and tell me what it wants <laughs> So, alright, and then I'll just tap off that excess there. So, let's take this brush here, sort of clean up a little bit of that. Wow, look at that. Look at that shimmer. And that's why I didn't want to put too much because didn't want it to uh, overpower some of the detail work that's in this piece. So a little goes a long way. Okay. So now, I'm going to go in How's that look so far? I know my lighting doesn't do it justice, but you can see that sparkle. So I'm going to go in 
with another color here at the top. And I think I want to use some of the this gunboat um what do they call it? It's like a gray metallic. And I think I'm gonna use that for his head. Gunboat, that's what I was thinking. So I'm just gonna gently just apply some of that. And I'm not giving no, again, no rhyme or reason for thought. Just letting the colors just sort of guide me. Yeah, I like it. Maybe I can get a little bit better light here. You kind of see how that... And this one is called Depth. So we're just going to work. Inside. And like I said again, you don't have to use a lot of this powder. I am loving this. And you know what, now I'm going to use it on the tail. Uh, I think that would be kind of cool. And being that this, you know, it's a steampunk type of thing, you know, you use all these types of elements, these colors, these um, metals, the um, grays, the blacks, the browns, the golds. And you just see how your piece is, just comes to life. Wow. So, I'm going to try to speed up a little bit here. But I just wanted to come on and share with you this process. Uh, it, it took me a while to think about what I was going to do, and I had to find the elements that I wanted to use. I just didn't want to use acrylic paint, although I could have used some alcohol markers. I, I don't know, I was just really trying to see you know, what I could do to bring out the lusciousness of this piece. Look at that. Oh, I'm excited about this. And I think I'll go in there's the tail. Let's see. Put some on the the claws here, the feet. Tap off that excess. What do you think, Jay? <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate you sending me this piece because this is just absolutely um, phenomenal. I love, I love the resin process, and I'm enjoying uh, doing some resin pieces myself. And I have several molds, not anything like this. Mine are a little bit smaller, more. Um, like jewelry type molds and I do have some other bigger pieces of um, resin molds that I purchased uh, and I'll be doing some process videos on those 
Um, I'm not as good as I've seen some other folks. So I'm just getting there. And that's how you learn. It just takes patience. Patience, observation. So, what do you think so far? Okay. Again, I'll tap off some of that, but I like how that um, that mica powder brings out that. So I can go on and on with this uh, piece, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it right now because then I'm gonna go ahead and get the little um, gold st um, stamp pad here, and then I'm just gonna tap certain areas and see how that plays out. So stand by. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take this little ink pad. And I'm just going to highlight some of those little raised areas. Here on the wings. On the feet. On the tail. go some of those little areas there just the raised areas you know and I think that this is a done deal now knowing me after I say it's done, I'll come back and I'll probably look at it and say, oh, I could have did this or I could have did this. But right now, you get the gist of how to work with mica powder, resin, and using this Heidi Swap Marquee Faux Rust Kit. So, I like it. I like it a lot. And I'll just let this dry, and then I've got to do a, I want to do a top coat to seal this, just to make sure that, you know, nothing comes off. But, yeah. Beautiful. So, there you have it. And I just want to... Thank everyone. Let me zoom in on that. See if we can get a clear. Uh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone for joining me today. Hope uh, I've inspired you um, to get out and use your your um, paints and your um, things that's in your stash, and just give it a try. Um, so I don't know um, how I'm going to apply this as to, you know, if I'm going to hang it or if I, I may put it in a frame. I'm not sure just yet, but I'll, I'll make sure that um, I'll take pictures of that and when I do decide to um, display it. So thank you for joining me today. And again, thank you, Jay, for sending me this beautiful piece. I love it, love it, love it. Look at that. Love it, love it, love it. So, all right, everyone, take care, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.